Welcome to the Art of Living, where we explore the intersections between art and architecture. Today we're at the home of artists Benjamin Armstrong and Moya McKenna. Let's have a look inside this incredible home that Ben's built. Hi Ben. Hi Fiona. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> So today we're at the home and studio of Benjamin Armstrong and Moya McKenna. So Ben works in a range of mediums including prints, sculpture, glass, wax um, and has been very hands-on with the building of his home and Moya is a highly talented painter. So they both have their studios separate in the home and then the actual house is centralised and connecting the, the three different spaces. So Ben, tell us about your experience. You're, obviously you went to your friend James Stoughton from Workshop Architecture to design this house. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about your experience working with James? Uh, but there was not really any, uh, whilst we went to him, but there was not an intentional plan to formally work with him it just it just really unfolded and then we were working together and at some point we agreed that there'd be this exchange of art for architecture uh, and that made the relationship very beautiful yeah. I think, because it was never um, it was sort of fueled by passion and passion for the vision and and a commitment to on our behalf to realize James's vision which would then become our home and workplace. <laughs> <laughs> so again, exploring this intersection between art and architecture, there was a really lovely moment in the story of the build of this house where you started producing artwork that had a connection to the architecture. Yeah, that's, that's true. So maybe uh, about a year into the build, I started cutting a couple linoleum blocks, which um, in fact the prints are here and uh, they were really directly related to the building. Um, they were cut over quite a long time period, so maybe about a, a year as I was building and cutting and, and there was a point where uh, very close to the end of the building where the building permit was about to run out and we had to have like the last gasp, the, the moment where we get it all done and, and um, I decided to addition them and print them up and uh, it was almost like a, a little uh, fundraiser for the, for the last part of the building which um, was a, a quiet triumph in the end. Mm. Uh, so the yeah, an addition of these works funded the final completion of the building. And this is one of your trades with James the architect as that's, well. That's right. I mean, what, what a pleasure and privilege to be able to say to James, here's something that talks back to all the beautiful work he'd put into our place. Fantastic. So Ben, the way the house is designed, the stair really just you feel like you, you just want to be drawn up vertically to the top of the building, which is where we are now. Mm. Um, how, how did this space come about and how does it inspire you? Uh, it's so true that you do sort of get sucked up and... and spat out. <laughs> spat out at the top here, <laughs> launched out. And um, it, 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 one of the great things about this, it, 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 it's really... Um, striking if you think back through it is that we sent James to look at this space when we were interested in buying it and he came and we were living in New South Wales which is this sort of connection we have back to this area in southeast New South Wales and James came and took all these photographs of, of inside the building, the front of the building and then also out in the streets down by the Mary Creek and from this street behind us he realised that it, it had this great city skyline so uh, from the moment we informally started working as architect client um, he said we're going onto the roof and you know as soon as I came up here once we purchased it and nervously ascended the ladder um, 
yeah, it was very apparent why you would go on the roof. And yeah, I guess it's become a, a space of, um, I mean, th this is it in wet conditions. <laughs> Still pretty pleasant. Yeah, you got that lovely grey Melbourne skyline. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's beautiful. It, like pretty much morning and evening, it's always a space we come up because you've got that great easterly sunrise or moonrise yeah. horizon and, and the same out to the west you get the amazing sunset yeah beautiful yeah. sunset so it's a it, in you know when the weather's more um benevolent then yeah we we have breakfast up here we we have dinner up here and and just generally you know absorb the industrial miasma yeah because i think it's a complete contrast to the rest of the house which is very inward looking and you do kind of come up and out up into this space. Mm -hmm. Talk about the ziggurat a little bit and why that was built. So, uh, so it, it um, well, it, it, came, it was born out of this sort of suggestion that we, you know, seeing as we'd come up onto the roof, there was this uh, desire to have an sort of unpinged horizon view. And uh, the matrix of the staircase, as James designed, um, and to fit the balance of the courtyard, this was the, the set out height of the, the deck. And um, after various conversations, James said, why don't we put a ziggurat there, which had come from his time in Egypt and visiting, visiting various places. So, yeah. so if you actually do come up, then you, you actually do see the, you know, you rise above all the rooftops and, and do get the... Yeah. And it, the view. view just transforms again. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah, and it relates to James's travel, so, you know, which yeah. has got a, a kind of tie-in point with with how the building was articulated and planned and in conjunction with that southeast New South Wales Great. thing we're talking about. So, Ben, uh, you've actually made everything in this house, including this amazing stair. Um, how did you go and what were the lessons that you learnt working with steel? Uh, the first lesson was that I, I didn't know I could actually do it until it all <laughs> became a necessity when uh, we discovered that a budget for fabricating a staircase like this exceeded what we had. Probably would have taken your whole budget, pretty much. Pretty, uh, and a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Yes, I, I, slowly I just developed the, the um, courage that I could have a go at it and uh, because it was so repetitive, um, it gave me lots of chance to perfect myself as I went up flight by flight. Because I have to say that it actually, the quality of it would exceed most steel fabricators mm -hmm. in Melbourne, so it's, it's exceptional. I got a bit obsessed. <laughs> It's very rewarding medium though to, yeah. to work in, uh, maybe a, as a counterpoint to the practice as an artist where you actually have a set structure and this has to measure this and be straight. Yeah. yeah. So this central courtyard which, you can, which connects every single space in this house obviously has a lot of meaning to you and really has a strong reference to your past home in southeast New South Wales. Mm. So yeah it, it certainly does and, and that the connection to southeast New South Wales is strong uh, although the period we lived there was actually only nine months. <laughs> um, but yes yeah, so the, the stone was um, comes from that area it's a granite with uh, beautiful pink flecks that through it that uh, the same stone you find all over Gabo Island and, and the Currajong tree too is also um, a native to southeast New South Wales, but not that area only. The tree is supposedly a very slow growing tree, and when you got it, it was only small two years ago, but it seems to have grown incredibly rapidly. Yeah, we're uh, shocked by that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's, yeah, it's meant to, it, it, well, it is in fact a slow growing tree, but because of the belief it's in a canopy, uh, surrounded by the building's courtyard, it's just shot up chasing the light and 
it's found it now, so we're hoping it's going to slow down. Yeah. Or it's just flourishing and loving its new environment. Mm. Yeah, I just hope it's not Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben, this is obviously your favourite place in the house and it's a, it seems like a really contemplative, enriching space. Um, tell us a little, about, a little bit about why you like being in this space. Uh, it's uh, quite a few reasons. One of the first ones is just that sort of low mm. ceiling that creates and, and the span of the room. So it creates a kind of warmth and um, you know nurturing space and then obviously it's like a cultural resource as well with you know Mary Gojak works here which uh, you know follow that contemplation yeah. idea for me and and reading material and music, music. And, and so yeah it becomes like a, a source of nourishment but a, a really beautiful environment to be in connected sort of indirectly with the world via, you know, this soft soft light that comes in from, from the courtyard. the courtyard. And I love the way James here has um, directed you with your bookshelf that you've made to hold it off the walls and hold it off the ceiling, which is sort of often the opposite way that, that architects would think, you know, generally mm. we'd go to the ceiling and go to the walls, but this has allowed, given you an opportunity really to um, put some of your beautiful artworks that you've collected over the years into the space as well and, and allow some level of flexibility. Mm, yeah, I think that that's really great that James's decision in, in that sense of not to expand it out, to, to allow it to be a bookshelf and it sits independent as a structure, yeah. but also maybe in that in a small homage to In Praise of Shadows, the value of keeping a corner, which yes. we've unfortunately Filled up with overflow <laughs> books. <laughs> that will change. <laughs> so this is a really interesting connection, I think, and this is where we get this crossover between art and architecture, is this vignette through here. Obviously, there is a connection between this space and Moyer's painting, Exit Into the Green. Mm, yeah, so, that, I mean, we're, as we're standing in, in Moyer's studio and, yeah, you... The, the formal sort of shapes in that painting, which is a, a green rectangle and then the verticality of the fence, mm. uh, it, it does play back into that painting as we look directly onto that rectangle and the, and the, the, the um, verticals yeah, of I, the fence. It's those beautiful subconscious moments that I'm really fascinated by. Yeah, I think they, they creep up on you. Yeah. You know, you don't really plan on them. So you've also mastered furniture making along the way as well. Uh, yeah, it, I, it was sort of maybe a, a seed of um, what was coming. I didn't know what it was going to grow into, but yeah, the table, the table was made when the building was purchased. And yeah, I really didn't know what was coming <laughs> with the building though. But then you carried that through to the, the hanging rails in the bedrooms and the kitchen cabinetry and absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think well, it was almost like, um, yeah, once the snowball got rolling, it uh, couldn't yeah. stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> and designing a chair is one of the hardest things that you can actually do. The ergonomics of it, designing it, is, mm -hmm. is incredibly challenging, but you've mastered yet another craft. I really have Moya to thank for uh, sitting on the dozens of <laughs> prototype chairs before we could sort of find the right position. And, and maybe those chairs are a little bit uh, better for people who are shorter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ben, thanks again for letting us into your home and uh, really exploring your skills as both a builder and an artist. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, thanks for coming by, Fiona. No problem. See you again. Yes. <laughs>